Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this dynamic segmented text effect. So even if you don't want to go with exactly this look, there's lots of scope for customizing it to your own taste. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So let's take a look. Okay, for this project, we're going with 1920, 1080, 25 frames a second, duration of five seconds. So the first thing I want to do is just bring in a background. So color solid, drop that in there and let's make it black. And let's make a new group above it. And we're going to type some text. So I'm going to type 2025. I'm using Meloriac, which is nice and round like that. I'm going to go with 360 for the size. Make sure to center it up like this. I'm just going to turn on the overlays and I'm going to turn on the grid just so we can get this lined up nicely in the center. So adjust the baseline till we're as central as we can make it. I think a centralize the O is a good idea like that. We might need to adjust that later. So let's just turn that off. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make a clone out of this group. So right click, make clone layer. Let's turn off the original group and let's maybe just drop it to the back there because we don't need to see it anymore. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask to this group. So the rectangular mask, I'm just going to draw it a little shape like that. And let's come over, center it up, come into the mask size. Let's set the width to 270 and the height to 110. Then we're going to come to properties and position, open up the position. We're going to add parameter behavior, randomize to that X position, the X position there. We're going to set the amount to something like 810. We're going to set the apply mode to add and subtract. The frequency let's go with, I think two, and let's turn the noisiness all the way down like that. Then let's duplicate this mask. So right click duplicate. Let's come to properties and move it up 110 on Y and then come back to the behavior. And let's just click on that random seed a few times. It's not looking very random at the start, but it will park anywhere in the middle and, and it's going to be randomized. And then let's duplicate it one more time. Let's come to properties. Let's set this one to negative 110 on Y. And let's just click on that random seed again till we've got a, a different result. So now we've got this. Then we're going to make another clone of this group. So right click, make clone layer. And again, we're going to turn off that group there. In fact, let's put that down below there as well because we're done with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clone layer and I'm going to add filters and border and stroke. And we want white for the color. We want one for the width and we want to hide the source. So now we're getting this effect, which is actually quite nice. So it was, it was important to put that on the clone because of the way this now joins up those shapes when they're overlapping. So then what we can do is we can clone this again. So I know there's lots of clones, but it is worth doing it this way, I think. So right click, make clone layer. Again, let's just turn that group off and move it to the back. So then what well, with this clone layer, we're going to add some color to it. So color and colorize, and let's just stick with the default there. Let's duplicate the clone. So right click duplicate and let's add behaviors, retime and reverse. And let's come to our colorize and let's change up the color. So let's go for something like this. So we're going the opposite direction with the color. And that's already starting to look quite nice, I think. So then I'm going to call this group uh, full and then I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate. I'm going to call this half. So I'm going to come into this group and I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to re reduce their opacity down to around 15%. And then what I'm going to do is open up the scale for this one, set this X scale to negative 100, come to this one and set the Y scale to negative 100. So with those flipped and flopped versions, we're adding in some extra visual detail in the middle. So then let's make a new group at the top and let's put those two into it. And let's also add some lines. So I'm actually going to make a new group inside here 
and call this lines. This is all about organization, this uh, project. So um, bear with me on this. So I'm going to add a line there, hold down the shift key, draw out a line across like that. Let's uh, reset it shape. I want white for the fill and let's have one for the width. So geometry, we want to make sure it's kind of something like negative 960 and positive 960. So it's the width of the screen. Let's come to properties and let's add to the X position a randomize behavior like that. Let's set the amount to 960, apply mode to add and subtract uh, frequency. Let's go for 20 and turn the noisiness all the way up. So then I just want to adjust its vertical position. So I'm going to just move it up like that. I want to go with 140 for that value there. Then I'm going to clone that. I'm going to copy that randomize onto the clone by holding down the option key and dragging it on there. Click a few times to get a different value for that. Let's set this Y value to 55. Let's duplicate that clone again. Let's set that Y value to negative 55. Let's click on the random seeds to get a different value for that. Duplicate it one more time. Set this value to negative 140. And let's again just click on the random seed a few times. And those lines are going to help us with our overall look. So then let's come to this master group. Let's call it master and let's add some filters to it. So first of all, I want to add blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to add color and levels. I'm going to add stylize, add noise. I'm going to add sharpen, unsharp mask. I'm going to add color, hue saturation. And I'm also going to add Hawaii super glow, but you could try the neon filter. And I'm also just going to set this group to fixed resolution like that. So then I want to take my lines and I want to set their opacity down to something like two like that. So I want to set my Gaussian blur value to 48, but I only want horizontal blur. So turn the vertical all the way down. Let's come to the levels and make sure we've got alpha selected here and then just crunch that in like so. And just crunching the blacks a little bit so there's lines pretty much disappear from the side like that, just, just to really faint on the, on the edges there. Let's come to the noise. We want to turn off auto animate and let's have a film grain for this, I think. Then let's come to the unsharp mask and maybe just crank that up to 16. Come to hue saturation and maybe just give ourselves a little bit more saturation, maybe go for 0.5. And then let's come to super glow or whatever glow you're going to be using. In this case, I'm going to turn the threshold all the way down and the amount all the way up like that. And then we're getting this. And I think probably those lines are too much. So let's come back to this levels here and let's just crunch it so we don't see the lines extending beyond the end there. It's a very small amount that you just need to, to crunch it there. I think that's going to look better like that. Just want to do a few more things with this. I want to come down to my original text group there. That's that one there. And I'm going to clone it. So clone that and let's drag it out to here. We'll need to add the border to it. So border stroke. We will need to set the color to mid gray. Let's set the width to one and let's hide source. And then what I'm going to do is come to properties and set the opacity down to zero. And then I'm going to add to that opacity a randomize, add parameter behavior randomize. Let's set the amount to 100%. Add is good. Turn the frequency all the way up. And then I'm going to come to, I don't know, like a second in. And with the randomize selected, I'm going to come to mark and mark in. I'm going to come forward a few frames, like maybe 11, mark, mark out. Then I'm going to duplicate this randomize, duplicate. Just move it along the timeline a little bit, duplicate it again and move that along the timeline as well. So then it's going to be a little bit more readable because we're going to get that occasional burst of the actual text over the top. So where we here, you can see that starts to become more readable. In actual fact, I probably didn't want to do that with the stroke. Let's let's set the color to white and see what happens. Yeah, might as well. So 
bit more dramatic, I think, probably without flashing like that. And the other thing I want to do is come to, I don't know, around uh, 15 frames, maybe. Open up this full thing here. Let's select both of these and let's keyframe their X position. Let's come to a few frames before the end. So for 12 is probably good. Hit a keyframe again. Let's come back to the beginning. Let's just select one of them and move it off to the left like that. Select the other one, move it off to the right. And let's come to the end and move that off to the left and move this one off to the right. And then we're going to get this sort of assemble thing. That's quite good. And it might be a good idea just to offset those so they're not exactly happening at the same time. So I've opened up the timeline editor and I'm going to select one of them, move its points. So we've got different start and end points for that one. Just makes that a little bit more interesting. And we're going to do the same thing with these halves here. So let's come to maybe a little bit further in. Let's come to 22 or something. And let's select both of the contents of those. Just going to hide that timeline as to while we do this. So select both of those, keyframe them there, come to the end, somewhere like that, 406, keyframe them again, come to the beginning, select just one of them, move it off to the side like this, not all the way. Select the other one, move it off to the other side like that. You get the idea. Come to the end and again, just sort of move that off like that and move this other one off in the opposite direction. So then we're getting that quite nice little reveal there. And that is more or less the effect. We could probably also just make a new group here, just above this clone layer, object new group. And we could drop everything that's otherwise in there into it. So all of that, drop it into there. And then we can just animate the Z position. So let's just add a ramp to that. Add parameter behavior ramp. And we want to zoom in. So let's have an end value of maybe, I don't know, 250. See how that works. Yeah. Oh, yes. So I just want to just adjust that text. And because everything is cloned as it ought to be, we can come back into our text and I can adjust that baseline. I think probably negative 137 is good. And now the O is sitting much more neatly in the middle of those lines. So quite an interesting effect, lots of possibilities. We've kind of just gone through this pretty quickly, making some fairly arbitrary choices. And I'm sure you'll have your own ideas as to what you like and what you don't like and what you want to experiment with. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.